You and me, partner. Center of town, high noon. Nope, Daisy's got last one lessons at noon. High two o'clock, that work? I got a spur fitting at two o'clock, how's about three? We don't need any more overscheduling, but we could all use more ways to save. What about Tuesday? Welcome to the Hercules Tire Smack Championship, part of Champ Week, presented by Principal Financial Group. The MAC tournament has for years been well known for being in Albany in the championship game, but it's very fitting that once again this year, it's in Atlantic City with two Jersey schools battling Monmouth and St. Peter's. The four seed Monmouth beat Ryder in our first game last night, 72-68. St. Peter's, 72-64, the best seed remaining after Iona lost in the quarterfinal round a couple of nights ago. Thank you for joining us. We've got a bid to give out. Jason Benetti, Tim Welsh along with you. Look, you've coached in this league. You've felt the experience of win and go to the tournament. What's this like right now? Oh, there's nothing like it. Uh, there's no bid stealing today. This is just one and done. The winner is ecstatic. The loser is devastated. And both these teams are very deserving to be in this basketball game. We're going to have a quality game tonight. Offense versus defense. Intensity. They know each other well. Both coaches respect each other. It's going to be a hard-fought battle. We'll start with St. Peter's here and KC Nadefo, who's a tremendous talent, especially defensively. Oh, he can change the course of a basketball game with his defense. An underrated, sometimes undervalued offensive player, but he does his work on the defensive end of the floor. Physical uh, in the paint, changes the game with blocking shots, but also runs the floor well, can switch out and defend perimeter players, just plays with an unbelievable focus. And George Pappas for Mammoth, he can light it up and Shaheen Holloway said to us earlier today, we have to get up on his toes. Well, Ryder got on his toes last night, but he still went for 17 in the second half because he finds a way to get open. He does a nice job of moving without the basketball, and King Rice frees him up with an array of different screens. Time for the keys to the game. They're brought to you by Tropicana. I imagine rebounding is going to be big today. Well, rebounding, defense, pressure, the ball, handle the ball. That's obvious in these types of games. But Monmouth can't get buried on the glass. They got In their match, last matchup, they absolutely got crushed on the glass. They have to stay with St. Peter's on the glass. They don't necessarily have to out-rebound them, but they have to stay with them and handle that pressure. They're going to St. Peter's is going to pick you up right over half court and get right in your chest. And for St. Peter's, Mama shooters out on the perimeter, George Pappas, Shavar Reynolds, the big man Walker Miller, all can make threes. They have to make and stay organized on the offensive end as well. Here's what's on the line. You mentioned it. You win, it's elation, especially for a Monmouth team that hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since they were in the first four in 2006. St. Peter's last got there in 2011. They were a 14 seed. The Peacocks out of Jersey City, Monmouth out of Long Branch, New Jersey, and Two coaches, you mentioned it, they have a very nice friendship. Shaheen Holloway, the former Seton Hall guard in his fourth season at St. Peter's. King Rice, more than a decade now at Monmouth, which is playing in its final MAC tournament game. They're off to the Colonial next year. And credit to the MAC, by the way, for not being one of those leagues that said, you can't win the automatic bid. They let the kids play. It wasn't their decision to change leagues, those kids. So they get to play for the automatic bid. Today. And they deserve it. And, you know, they've been, King Rice has been in Monmouth 11 years, and his team he's brought him all the way to the top of this conference. They've been near or at the top of this league for a while now. And so this, this program deserves it one more shot to win this league. And then Sh Shaheen Holloway has been just terrific in a short period at St. Peter's. And you can see his, both these guys were excellent college point guards, and you can see their imprint of their leadership and the way they teach the game on both sides. There's nervous energy for both of those coaches. You felt it, you saw it, King Rice with that sort of antsy smile as we get going. St. Peter's a very good defensive team, sometimes challenging to score for them at 67 a game. Well, the best part for the coaches is when this happens, the game starts. <laughs> Everything, the lead up is awful. But once the game starts, it's just basketball. Both teams I expect to play very well. Reverse there by Nadefo wouldn't go, and it's Monmouth basketball for their first touch. As we'll tell you about our starting lineups, they are brought to you by Ready Nutrition in this ball game. Uh, for St. Peter's, look out for Daryl Banks. He was one for eight 
in the game last night, but a major contributor, 11 points a game. And for Monmouth, Walker Miller down low is sort of their point forward wearing number four, the North Carolina transfer. When he steps out, they do a nice job of using him at the top of the key, both as a shooter and a passer. There's Miller, no good. Offensive rebound not collected by Marcus McClary for Monmouth. And we have a whistle. And there's an injured St. Peter's player down in the backcourt. That is Hassan Drame. 6-7 forward out of Mali. There's a little collision going for the loose ball. He he collided with Clary. He took one on his side. Shaking up. He got up on his own. I think he wanted to stay in the game, but Shaheen came out to see him, so they had to get a little rest and recover. Drame was important last night. He had six rebounds, three steals in 30 minutes. He's one of their forwards. His twin brother is also on the team, Fusini Drame. Here's the freshman, Clarence Rupert, big body freshman out of Philadelphia. This is Banks, the junior from LA, who we mentioned was not an offensive threat yesterday. He gets back tapped, and that's a foul on Banks. He reached out and grabbed Jarvis Vaughn for Monmouth. That should have been a uh, flagrant one. He, he, no play on the ball. He grabbed the offense. He grabbed. It. Straight up. And he grabbed on right in the shirt. That's no play on the basketball. King Rice wanted the call, didn't get it. In the NBA, that's a clear path foul immediately. And I agree with you. To make a strong argument for a flagrant one there. As here is Shavar Reynolds, a very good shooter. We saw it last night. Now Pappas for Miller, and he has it blocked by Rupert. Second chance won't go. And now it goes out to the sideline, and this is out of bounds. It's skidding St. Peter's Peacock, and Banks gives it right back to Monmouth. Well, you can feel the intensity already in this game. You know, the, the play has not been pretty on the defensive end very hard, but when the ball hits the deck, there's a lot of bodies swarming for it. And it will be all day long. Two tough dudes coaching King Rice, Jaheen Holloway. Vaughn hit a couple of threes yesterday. Eight points, efficient night for him. They get an open look in the corner, and that won't go. Second chance for Vaughn off the miss by McClary, and a whistle against St. Peter's. Vaughn made the most of any opportunity last night. He moves well without the basketball. That time he just kind of slid on in on the backside and didn't get a good block out on him. Uber kind of just shoved him a little bit, but Vaughn had the good position. This is eighth free throw try of the year, and it's no good for Jarvis Vaughn. Vaughn is not a bad free throw shooting team, 72%, but middle of the pack in the country. One nothing, Hawks with the lead. St. Peter's was in a really tough game. They were down one in the first half, at the end of the first half, last night against Quinnipiac. And now the double team comes. They spring it on him. And it's taken away by McClary, fighting hard. And he spits it out for Pappas. Oh, the lob! That was brilliant to Vaughn. Well, Marcus McClary was bound and determined to come up with that ball. They caught, they stepped the guard to spit it up, but then they got on the floor, and it was a scrum, but he used his power to come up with it. Nicely done to spring the trap and get the turnover. As Nadefo mishandles for a moment, he wants to take Vaughn to the hole with a foul against Jarvis Vaughn. Nadefo just a 53% free throw shooter. Here it is, get on the floor. Look at Banks lost control of it, and then Clary just found a way. Pappas, ever presence of mind with the head up. Perfect delivery over the top. So St. Peter's came in this game. We talked about the, the keys, and everybody, first thing you say about St. Peter's defense, defense, defense. Well, right now, Mammoth is getting after on a defensive end. So a lot of energy as you see what's at stake for St. Peter's who went to the NCAA tournament, as we told you, 2011. Last time before that was 1995, so one time in the last 
27 years for this school out of Jersey City. And the shadow of the Statue of Liberty, and it's 0 for 2 for Nadepo. Pappas, quick trigger from the corner, and he rings it up for three. So Monmouth yesterday goes up 10-0 on Ryder. Today they're up 6-0 on St. Peter's in the title game. We're back in 30 seconds. With GEICO, we can easily bundle home and car insurance and save even more? Yeah, just like that breakfast burrito. There isn't too much hot sauce, is there? I have a sensitive palate. I actually like hot sauce. How about guacamole? I don't really know what we're talking about anymore. Burritos. Sure. GEICO. A practice spicy crispy chicken sandwichito knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. King Rice told us earlier, when the ball doesn't go in early for George Pappas, he gets a little antsy. This one went in early. Well, they've got to get closer to him, though, and especially right out of transition. Daryl Banks is just kind of looking at him. He's in, he's in the neighborhood, but not close enough. You've got to be right on his shoe tops on the catch. Now, they were not, and that Monmouth bench starting to look like vintage Monmouth bench right now. Great season they had a couple years ago. King Rice had a 27 win year, a 28 win year. Here is Lee going glass. First two for Matthew Lee, who can really spark them. I'm really interested in this point guard matchup. Matthew Lee and Shavar Reynolds at the top. There's Reynolds. Mano a mano. These two point guards are good. They're organized, they run their teams, but they can go get their own when needed. A foul on Reynolds there, his first. Monmouth, Monmouth up in the pressure a little bit. And here you see Reynolds just a little rub screen right at the foul line, found an angle in. But Monmouth up in the pressure. You see the full court pressure last night, and they've done it already today. A little run and jump at the guard spot. They will trap and blitz ball screens, not only on the wing, but they'll do it right in the middle of the floor as well. Credit to Monmouth for getting in these guards' pockets very early. Lee with a five and a block by Vaughn out of bounds with 12 to shoot for St. Peter. Thomas has an absolute edge to their personality on the defensive end of the floor so far this afternoon. They are attacking the basketball at the rim. Both coaches talk to us about how tough and gritty the MAC is and how it gets officiated that way as well. A little body, but the block was clean enough. Here is Doug Etter, who got hit on the shot, and he'll get three free throws for St. Peter's. He tried to kick out the leg last night, didn't get the call. Here he gets hit by McClary. Well, Etter does a good job, and we saw it last night. He just kind of gets lost in the baseline, then he flares up, and I'm not sure about that one. He just kind of tried to sell it, and the officials block. McClary saying, I didn't even touch it. He's talking to Tony Chiazza, who has the three free throw call. So Eddard, he's the last guy you want to foul, too. He's the best free throw shooter in the MAC. He's top 35 in the country, and he's got a wonderful mustache to boot. These free throw shooters should have a nice mustache. You think so? Larry Bird, going back to the third. Right. You weren't even born then, but. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some clips. I've, I've seen Larry Bird, yeah, yeah. Uh, good free throw shooters and relief pitchers should have mustaches. <laughs> well, Eddard, I like the way Eddard plays. He moves well without the basketball. He's constant motion, and he doesn't need much room to operate when he does catch it. Miller on the handoff for Pappas. They play a little two-man game. Miller didn't take the shot, Reynolds will. And the rebound for St. Peter's in Drame. Well, he can make that shot. He can also make threes, but he's so unselfish and a very skilled passer. King Rice and Walker Miller have developed a very strong bond over the last year, and Lee rims out the three. And the rebound for Nikkei Ruddy, who's playing on a bum ankle, but will do anything he can to get in the ball game. Mammoth did not blitz that pick and roll at the top. And they'll switch up their coverages throughout the game. Yeah, we're gonna get a foul away from the ball. Shaheen Holloway is hopping mad, literally hopping up and down next to the official Tom Morrison. The lobbying will continue throughout from Atlantic City. 
It's amazing. He's talking about motorcycle insurance, and people love it. You deserve to save. I deserve to save. I mean, he has a way of making you feel seen. Bundle car and motorcycle insurance at geico.com. A prep to spicy crispy chicken sandwich eater knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. Earlier today here at Jim Whalen Boardwalk Hall, the Fairfield Stags, the number one seed, sending off their coach in style. Fairfield, the one, gets the victory. First time in the NCAA tournament on the women's side since 2001. And Joe Prager, their head coach, has announced he's retiring after the year. So congratulations to him. He'll take that net. Head on off to the NCAA women's tournament, all of which will be here on ESPN. Sure, the reward will be a little trip up the up 95 North to play in stores next yeah, week well, against UConn. We wish you the best of luck on that. Short trip they can bring their fans, but the amazing thing watching the women's game and I went to the Big East tournament last last weekend is the skill level, high level of skill that the women's game has now. Everybody can shoot, great passers at Fairfield. Very impressive. Hey, here's 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 you can see the, the dedication of that athletic department to the women's game. Still continues to grow. You can watch Gino and his team for a long time. Up in Connecticut, they've always been class. Well, Fairfield's always had a good program, but going back to the great Diane Nolan and uh, good atmosphere earlier today. Uh, AC for the women. Second foul on Lee for St. Peter's as Miller with that quick fire. Rebound batted out beautifully. McClary and Monmouth will reset. It's Pappas, and it's a three. It all starts with Wes Miller, Walker Miller, excuse me. He's so highly skilled. He's got his head up. He's never looking for his own shot. He's looking for the open man. That time, Pappas just kind of slid into that open slot. Monmouth. And they're going to get three and a foul out of that. And a big shot for Daryl Banks. Well, that's the first time all afternoon we've seen Monmouth go to the 2 3 zone. They look very active in it, but Ruddy on the wing just kind of a slow closeout and ran right into the shooter. And closed out probably hard enough, but not under control. He didn't come to that jump stop right in front of the shooter. St. Peter's gets nearly a quarter of its points from the free throw line this year, so they are very willing to get to the basket and get to the foul line. As Hall has said earlier today, we need Daryl Banks to get going. Pap is always shot seeking, missed that one and the rebound for Fusini Trame. Freshman Jalen Murray is checked in in the backcourt. This is Nadefo for Edder, who makes himself available so well, and he missed that three. Reynolds with the head up, looking for a secondary break here. McClary very willing to post up, and that is wiped away by Nadefo. McClary kind of forced the issue down low. He didn't have good position. He was trying to back his way in. And KC Nadefo's in the neighborhood. It's time to go to another street. Yeah, there's no sunshine man coming along. Well, you've got shooters spotting up on the perimeter. You need to keep your head up, maybe draw that second defender, then kick it out. That's a travel. It's a walk on Ruddy, who got caught in between, and a turnover Monmouth. Well, that's what St. Peter's defense does to you. It just makes you feel uncomfortable. Everyone's in a stance. They've got their hands up. And they rotate really quickly. They close out tremendously. And you see Monmouth, they ditch the zone they have. Back to the pressure man to man. Rice, he mentioned that he felt like teams aren't patient enough against the St. Peter's defense. We saw it play out on that side of the court on the first turnover for Bobby. Jeff the screen for Murray trying to go to work. That's a long two, and it cashes in. Good move, Jalen Murray, the freshman. Doesn't look for his own much, but that time, see that quickness on the step back. Reynolds to pull up for the answer. That's no good. And another offensive rebound for Monmouth. Very good at tracking the ball and getting a hand on it to redirect the rebound. Walk 
Parker Miller a rim run. Wanted to go cross lane with it. Might have rushed the shot a little bit. He did. He didn't take his time. He didn't put his eyes on the rim until the last second. He was trying to make a quick pass. They recovered and he just shot it, but short on it. You said it earlier. Sometimes maybe too unselfish. Walker Miller. Six in a row for St. Peter's. Murray's been a part of that. This is the short rebound Miller. Monmouth in its final MAC tournament game. Miller wasn't looking for it. Pappas found it, put on the line. No good. And the rebound to Jeffo. Pappas is very upset with himself. He had a nice clean look at the top, just a little short. It's one of those plays that you could draw it up actually like that. You take it, get the screen for Miller, everybody look the other way. Here's Banks. Pappas breaks it down. See what Miller does. Marching is back. The Depo got the help. And then he swatted it away. And you see a square defensive play. Scores. Casey Nadefo again. He is so aware of what's going on in the paint. His eyeballs are like tennis balls down there. He's ready to attack at any moment. But Monmouth on the offensive end, when they put the ball in, down in the low box to Walker Miller, everyone's just standing. They need to cut and move because they'll fi he'll find the open man on the perimeter, but they right now they're just standing That's still. And now McClary goes individual. The depot got into it. Oh my goodness, he came back across. And they're going to get a foul on that one. But Nadefo now is basically a hockey goalie against an odd man rush. He is impressive. Wow. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. And Levy Recognition. Recognition solutions that elevate performance. And my car is dented. Geico does offer 24-7 claim service. 24-7? That's a lot of attention. They're not actually with you 24-7. They're just available whenever you need them. Okay, because I'm an introvert. It's incredibly rare. I don't think that's right. Geico. Finished? Of course not. You're no crispy, juicy, tender rookie. You know that pouring the McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich crumbs into your mouth is the only way to say your final goodbye. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. King Rice, former North Carolina point guard in his 11th season at Monmouth, your former assistant, Tim. And, and this guy is as genuine as you're going to find in a head coach. Passionate, loyal, really knows the game, uh, has grown into a terrific coach. He's always been a good coach, and now he's a at the highest level, he really is. And watching his teams over the course of the years, really good offensive mind. Uh, players love playing for him, they play hard for him. He's hard on them, but they love playing for him because he's there for him 24 seven. He was telling us the story how he meets Walker Miller in the gym every morning at 11 for a little shooting. And uh, that's the type of guy he is. And uh, Mammoth is very lucky to have him and they've locked him up for five more years, which is a smart move on their part. You know, he's got one of the great rebounders. J.R. Reed on the bench next to him, but King Rice is the guy that goes and rebounds for Walker Miller. It's a battle of the point guards today, and it's not just Reynolds and Lee, it's Holloway and, and Rice. Just two really good point guards back in their day at Seat Hall in North Carolina. Yeah, Shaheen Holloway, we were talking to him earlier about his NCAA tournament experience. Back in 2000, they ended up beating a two seed in Temple, but in the first round, beat Oregon because of a game winner from Shaheen Holloway. As Dasher misses the jumper, his second chance for Murray and St. Peter's on an 8-1 run to lead 13-12. Murray's had the ball in his hands quite a bit. Nice defense there, and Murray chucks it up. That caught the rim, I guess. Oh, that did not hit the rim. I, I didn't think so either, but they reset the shot clock. And that won't go for Drummond. I don't believe that was even close to hitting. On the drive, that's gone. Who misses on the doorstep. And 
St. Peter's gets it back. Well, Vaughn's got to take his time. He came flying in from the perimeter. Good pass. He's just got to take his time, jump stop, and gather his momentum and get under control. He just threw it up in the air, hoped it went in. You see these pockets where teams really struggle to score against St. Peter's, and we're watching it right now with their defense against Monmouth. Now a stifling trap into a travel forcing a turnover for the Peacock. Now this is what we saw Monmouth do last night against Ryder. Any side ball screen they blitz that are trapped in hard, and they do a good job of, of closing the trap down where the offensive player has no vision, and that time forced a turnover. Jaheen Holloway, former point guard himself, knows that if you put yourself on the side there and that blitz comes, you're in some trouble. Well, you can't put your head down. You have to attack one of the trappers, and hopefully somebody flashes into the middle of the floor, and you can beat it and make them pay at the rim. Foster working hard down low. That's a 10th straight miss for Monmouth. Getting decent looks, but they're under duress because St. Peter's does not give you anything clean. Yeah, high stress shots to this point for Monmouth. In what we expected would be a car wash today, a grinder of a game. Hard drive leads to a tie up, and the arrow will go to Monmouth. First time in the MAC title game, Tim, two Jersey schools. You could play this game right at some playground right off the Jersey Turnpike, right. and I think we'd still get the same feel. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of jug handle left turns, find yourself at a park. And Pappas hanging, can't score. That's 11 straight misses now for Mott. Every shot has been contested. Every blockout is there for St. Peter's. They are a fine tuned machine on defense. Dean Holloway very quickly says that is who we are. That's our identity is the defensive situation. And that is going to be a block call, although Drame looked like he was out of control. He sort of sideswiped Foster. That's his first. This defense has been good. It really has. They switched up their coverages. They, they ran and did a little run and jump at half court. They've Blitz the ball screen on the side, and then the last possession, they start switching everything. Mixed in a little zone earlier on. Totally out of control. Still, Drame puts it up and in. He barely stayed upright. Drame got that quick first step, those long arms, and somehow slid it in there. Samuel Chapu, senior out of Quebec has checked in. Miller looking for some room, a lot of contact and dancing. I mean, that was that was a tango there. And a foul against Reed. He was trying to deny Shavar Reynolds at the top, but he was a little over aggressive with the body and the hands. Sixth foul on St. Peter's, five against Monmouth. Free throws might be really important in this game considering all the contact. Shapu against Reed for Miller, and that's way wide. Rame hit a three yesterday. He is fouled on the way to the rim, so two free throws coming. Monmouth's gone seven minutes plus without a basket, but their defense keeping him in the game. Solid on both ends. There's no rhythm on the offensive end because of the tough D. They say we Irish are a lucky folk, but this St. Patrick's Day, may I remind you, that good taste doesn't come from luck. It comes from the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world. Rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Finished? Of course not. You know crispy, juicy, tender rookie. You know that pouring the McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich crumbs into your mouth is the only way to say your final goodbye. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.
Champ Week presented by Principal rolls on later tonight on ESPN. Texas Tech and Kansas in the Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Championship. And then 8.30 Eastern Time, the New York Life ACC Championship. Virginia Tech, the lurking bid stealer at the Barclays Center against the Duke Blue Devils. Did you know that was Coach Cave's final ACC tournament game? I do know that the boys were making their picks today on game day from the Barclays Center this morning, but I didn't get it. They were all they all picked the same winners in every that. game. I mean, come on, let's, let's have some fun with this. We have a little a little banter. Yeah, group think. They, they, they must be tired for being in Brooklyn a few days. <laughs> <laughs> First free throw is good for Hassad Drame. He and his twin brother Fusini from the capital of Mali playing together for St. Peter's, two of the top nine in the rotation. And two for two for Hassan Drame. Seth Greenberg picked Virginia Tech over Duke. Of so course he did. Keep an eye on that one. Coach, I got to pick my guys. I got to <laughs> pick my former team. What are you Into the lane, Ruth scores. Miles Ruth, who played just five minutes yesterday, makes it a three-point game. Well, Miles Ruth will make the most of his limited opportunity. He is an aggressive offensive player. That time showed that quickness off the bounce and body control at the rim. That was after 12 straight misses for the Mondo Hawks. The Defo whips it mid lane, and this will stay with St. Peter's with nine to shoot for the Peacocks. Now Ruth got caught on the Defo down low, and here's Ruth off the bounce, creating a little space, not much, and finishing the lane. And now Mammoth, they got caught on a switch on that last possession. Ruth was guarding the Defo, but very intelligent defense. Walker Mill came over to help, and they did a nice job of rotating back down on the weak side. Credit Ruth for staying in the game a couple of days ago with the Niagara fans heckling him all night, calling him baby. He somehow made it through. Fans are quite creative. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> like taking candy from a baby. Aggressive. Look at him. He's off the bounce, he comes right in and nice. He he can ignite us a little bit. Man, the help defense, the depot is just so aware down there. Well, when you beat your man off the bounce against St. Peter's, expect that. So if you're not balanced and, and have your eye on the target early and can feel the help, that's what's going to happen. They're going to send it into the stands. So when you drive into the gap, you have to be ready to make another pass. You have to be ready, but your teammates have to move into open areas as well. I've said that a couple times now. Monta just not making itself available when the ball gets in the paint. They're also doing a good job on Walker Miller. They're denying him, him at the top of the key. Runner for Vaughn, no. Offensive rebound for Miller. Chucks it up. He's got a very unorthodox looking shot. Well, he, that's his shot though. He did, it's like a quick release and it's hard to block it. That, that's how he's definitely was guarding him. He didn't even leave his feet, but he doesn't have the target early enough. Low scoring championship game. The Depot intercepted by Pappas, who's been quiet recently. He was one on three and stumbling, and so they will reset. Reynolds to Seton Hall transfer. King Rice said big night for Shavar Reynolds, and he's going to pull to score. Oh, he had Nadefu on as well, and Nadefu gave him a lot of room out there, kind of backed up and dared him to shoot, and Reynolds delivered. This could be a first to 55 sort of deal tonight for the MAC championship. Rame double clutch on it, kind of hurt him in the rhythm of the shot. And they're going to get a foul against Monmouth on the rebounding action. It's the first on route, so a one and one for St. Peter's. Yeah, this is a freshman. He's going to be a sophomore. He's a, one of the younger players on the team. But this team is filled with veteran players, 22, 23, 24 year olds. So it's hard for the younger guys on Mama to get a lot of quality minutes because King Rice is going to go with his experienced guys in a game like this. They are eighth 
in average experience in the country. I mean, these guys have been around a long time. They've lost a couple of times to Iona over the past half decade in this MAC championship. As they'll get the seventh foul against St. Peter's as well. It's Andrame. One's good, and we are tied at 17. John Spons did a good job of making himself available in the lane. He moves well. He works well with Walker Miller. Now Walker Miller's going to take a little bit of a break. Banging around a lot on Walker Miller so far tonight. He hasn't had many clean look opportunities. Saw Shaheen Holloway, former Seton Hall guard we talked about, 2020 coach of the year in this back. Highly regarded young coach, Rick Pugino was raving about him the other day. And what he might mean for an even bigger program at some point down the line. But Shaheen Holloway very happy in Jersey City. Thanks to Nadefo, and he scores. Nice little pick and roll play. Nadefo making himself available and finishing in traffic. And Again, an underrated offensive player. Three straight years, defensive player of the year in this league, but he does, he gets him 11 points a game. Vaughn knocks down a three. Now, this is what Vaughn did last night. He does a good job of just making himself available. He can play in the paint, he can play around the rim on the box. He floats to the perimeter, to the corner, and just finds a way to get open and then with a quick release. Junior was hurt a couple of years ago, only played nine games. 12 as a sophomore last year. Rame had his pass redirected. Entered in the corner on the find from the death row and it's whirled down. That's what happens, you take a charge, you take one of your defenders out of the game. Reynolds tried to take a charge, he was on the floor and it was five against four. In. That'll be a block as Reynolds made his way to the rim. Offense starting to loosen up a little bit. 22-21. 3.55 to go in the first. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. PTI, I need the PDF, C-O-B, A-K-A, E-O-D. What's the E-T-A? A-S-A-P, F-Y-I. See my I-M? T-L-D-R. What? Too long, didn't read. We don't need any more acronyms, but we could all use more ways to save. PMX, YOLO! A practice spicy crispy chicken sandwichito knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. ba da ba ba, -ba. Well, if you're going to go to the NCAA tournament, you have to have an identity to hang your hat on, and we know what St. Peter's identity is. It's the big D, the resistance at the rim, the physicality, the pressure, the toughness that you must match if you're going to beat St. Peter's. St. Peter's up on the rim, not one, but two, defending and rotating and blocking it right out of bounds. You know, if they show up as a 15 seed or a 16 seed, whatever they end up as, St. Peter's, two seed, you're out of the back. There's going to be a team that's on one of the top two lines, if it is St. Peter's that wins, that's going to have to work its tail off to beat these guys. We're going to have to find a way to match their toughness. And King Rice talked about it today earlier. He said, we have to match their toughness. We have to answer it with every player. You can't, and, that, and I don't mean four out of five, five out of five, because they will take advantage. And if you don't have all five guys in a good rhythm on the offensive end, and you have one guy back on their heels, then your whole offense is thrown off. The rhythm of your offense, the timing of everything. So far, Monmouth, I believe, has answered it. It hasn't been pretty as such, but Monmouth has done a good job in its own right on the defensive end as well. Reynolds goes two for two. That's five lead changes the last five possessions in this game. Blue the Booty Blues had a song called Drive by Seesaw. That's what we're doing together here in Atlantic City as 
Ball was on the deck, picked up by Drame, and Edder just ripped it out. Mammoth almost caused the turnover. St. Peter somehow squeezed it out of there, and Edder was wide open on the backside. He's top three in this league in three-point shooting, over 41% for the year, as Foster got loose with the basketball, and now he's called for a foul. Well, that's what St. Peter's defense does to you. It makes you feel uncomfortable, makes you rush things, makes you do things you don't normally do. And you just have to be stronger with the basketball and, and answer. If you're back on your heels, if you're straight up, you've got to play low against this defense as well. If not, they'll eat you up. Isaiah Dasher to the free throw line for a one and one. Get a second in the SEC right now. Tennessee has a lead on Kentucky, so the Wildcats, the three seed in the SEC, got by Vanderbilt. How about AM and Buzz Williams earlier? Buzz making his magic down at College Station, and uh, really heartwarming to see the SEC honor Dick Vitale today yeah. walk out. He's uh, looking good, feeling better. This type of weekend where you really wish Dick Vitale was doing a game. This Lovely wife right in the rain there yeah. as well, and uh, nice job by the SEC. Tremendous. Pappas just fell, and what do we have? We got a tie up. It will be St. Peter's basketball. Pappas just fell. He just fell, but he fell because of the pressure. You know, they're up, they're poking at the ball. Got high hands. They're in a, they're in a stance. It really, it, we saw it earlier with Nadefu, how he went from like almost the elbow area to the other side of the rim to protect the rim and block a shot. Uh, they would cover on shooters that way as well. They go from help side to ball side as quick as anybody. Header for a give and go, didn't have the rim. Instead, he kicks it out, and Dasher splashes down a three. Edder just presence of mind. It really wasn't an open play on the backside, but he didn't force the issue and just rotated it out, found a wide open dash. Down to two and a half to go in a gritty first half here in Atlantic City. Pappas gave it up. It's Reynolds behind the screen from McClary, and it's tipped out nicely by Reed. Latrell Reed playing significant minutes at Juco transfer for St. Peter's and Shaheen Holloway. Enter the lob. The dead ball goes up to collect it. Rice not happy. Miscommunication on the backside. No, no ball pressure on the on Eddard on the perimeter, just gave him a clean, clean look all the way to the top. Seven in a row for St. Peter's to lead by six and come back with us in 30 seconds. Finished? Of course not. You're no crispy, juicy, tender rookie. You know that pouring the McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich crumbs into your mouth is the only way to say your final goodbye. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. This St. Patrick's Day, may I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy? <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Quick seven for the Peacocks out of Jersey City, Tim. Well, Doug Edder, backdoor cut. He moves well without the ball. He dribbles all the way around the baseline to find a wide open Darryl Banks, and then Backside, a nice lob play. I believe was, that was Dasher with the three on the perimeter. But Edwards, a, a very good basketball player, has a good knowledge of the game. It's pesky out there and can make open shots. Thought we were about to have a couple of people in our lap with the ball on the near sideline here. And thank you for reaching to protect me. Here's Ruth. Missed it. Rebound is tipped to St. Peter's. That's the other piece of this game. It's one and done for Monmouth in the last few possessions. Defoe. 
Tremendous two-way player for St. Peter's. Got to the rim, couldn't score. Drame with the rebound. Gasser took a stab. Papp has closed him off. And he'll give it to Reed with about a minute to go in this first half. That's knocked away by Miller. Half is to Miller. Miller wasn't ready for it. He's down on the deck, and we have another tie-up, and it will stay with Monmouth. It's a little out of sorts, and this is what the defense does. I mean, Monmouth's missed 17 of its last 20 shots, Tim. Well, you've got to, you have to read the defense. That time, George Pappas just made a, a bad decision. I mean, he did, normally, obviously, we just clear, the, clear it out, wait for the defense to get set, and then get organized and run a play. But as you said, sometimes the pressure Makes you do weird things. High, quick hands in front of Miller's face. And a great find by Pappas to Vaughn rolling to the rim. Well, that was a real good set baseline out of bounds play. They had a misdirection screen down, roll, down low. And Vaughn doing a nice job of rolling to the rim. Wait is four for St. Peter's. Monmouth was up 6-0 in this game as they clear this rebound. Ruth wants to go one on two, and that was a bad choice, but he'll end up with the ball back. Well, Ruth is one of those, Miles Ruth is one of those players that can hit the home run or get an inside the park home run. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Or strike out. Or he might yank it foul. He's, he was flying. He wanted to make the home run pass to Miller. He got bailed out by the ball being tipped out of bounds, and it looked like there was nothing there. Winner goes to the NCAA tournament, Monmouth and St. Peter's. Javar Reynolds from Lakehurst here in New Jersey. Step back into a two. He missed it off the front iron. And the rebound is pulled down by St. Peter's, and that will do it for a first half that saw seven lead changes and four ties. And Doug Eddard with a couple of big shots and eight in the first half for the Peacock. Well, defense travels. We thought it would be a grind it out, punch in the stomach game. Nose to the grind. Loose balls, jump balls. Not a lot of pretty offense, but intense defense. Zubin and Sean have your halftime report when we return after this. Welcome back to the Hercules Tires MAC Championship, part of Champ Week. Presented by Principal Financial Group from Jim Whalen Boardwalk Hall on the iconic stage on the left side of the floor. St. Peter's by four in a get your fingernails dirty sort of game, Tim Wells. Well, we used to call it a rock fight back in the old days, but this is just good, hardcore, intense defense for two teams that want the same thing. They're fighting, clawing, getting the ball in the lane, but no thank you. A lot of resistance at the rim. And Mom has done a good job with their defense as well. They've been scrappy, they're getting on the floor, they're trapping ball screens, they're running and jumping at the top. They're rebounding the ball very well, but neither team can get any sort of rhythm going on the offensive end. If you're a one or a two seed and you watch tape of this game and you go into the NCAA tournament, what's your first thought? But you better take care of the basketball and you better be able to rebound it. And well, that's the thing. This is the MO of both these teams tonight. You know, all the numbers defensively don't match St. Peter's on the season, but they're matching them tonight. Rupert shoving Miller around. Miller recovers and gets the block. Ball on the ground, and it's taken away by McClary, and he double dribbled. Good job by Miller there to take the hit and then power back up to block the shot. Once again, that's what we were saying earlier. Monmouth has nothing to be ashamed of. They have matched St. Peter's toughness and the ability to rotate and defend at the rim. Seven lead changes, as you saw earlier on. 29-25 on a halftime, despite a very quiet day for Matthew Lee. Just two points after 14 yesterday in the semis. That's a foul against Monmouth. On the double team, it was Miller and Reynolds who came together, and it's Reynolds with his second personal. Ten for Jarvis Vaughn, who gets him two and a half points a game in fewer than ten minutes a game. Well, King Grace is going with the odd hand. He has played very well. He's real active on the defensive end on the glass, but offensively moves around different spots on the floor. Lee made himself available, missed the three. 
St. Peter's is a very strong offensive rebounding team, and they create a foul there. This is kind of a scrum down there. They have seven players in the lane. It's two fouls on Vaughn. Kind of a microcosm of how the night has gone. Just missed shots and a lot of arms and elbows. That's a three for Banks and a foul. St. Peter's got a little special for Daryl Banks on the out of bounds and just got a half step. That's all he needed. Almost wasn't really ready to defend that out of bounds play. And Marcus McClary was a step slow. He got rub screen right at the elbow, but the help came late. Foul on McClary, as you mentioned, his second. So three fouls on that possession for Monmouth as they trail by eight. Largest lead of the day for St. Peter's. In the post, Miller. That's Vaughn. Missed it for three, and the rebound for Drame. Obama somehow, some way, has to get George Pappas going here in the second half to get back in this game. What he did in the second half yesterday with 17 points after halftime. Another ball on the deck, and Nadefo pries it away. It's an open three for Lee, and he missed it. Wow, they go over the top again. Nadefo, who nearly traveled. Lee breaks down the lane. Nadefo gets fouled to go to the free throw line, and the Monmouth fans are not happy. They are booing. Tony Chiazza, Matt Potter, and Tom Morrissey are officials tonight. Well, you got to make that call. He definitely took an extra hop in the lane on the way to the basket. Missed it, but they got the offensive rebound here. Off the bounce, and St. Peter's just continues just to put their head down and attack the rim and throw it up there and go get it again. Third foul on Jarvis Vaughn, so that's a big call. That's four fouls in 96 seconds. King Rice working Tony Chiazza over on the sideline. Tony is finished with the conversation. King is not. He's just trying to get this evened up a bit. You know how it is. When you look at the scoreboard, it says 4 0. It's the easiest piece of evidence a coach has. Reynolds is getting ridden all the way up the sideline. And there's a foul. It's the first on St. Peter's here in the second half. You get the feeling the free throws are going to be important down the stretch. These are probably going to tighten up the calls. So they don't have to listen to the coach <laughs> back for the fouls on every time down the court. And that time, Shavar Reynolds was just sprint dribbling up the sideline. He was just being bodied up all the way up, and he was fortunate just to get a foul at the rim. As King Rice was mimicking over on the sideline. 34-26. So Chiazza left, and now Morrissey is over there. King Rice is working him over. It doesn't matter which official it is. You don't care if it's the guy who just made the call. You just want to talk to somebody. And the great thing when you're having those conversations, you kind of just you don't have to really think. You can just say the same thing over and over and over. You just right? repeat the same line. Well, that's an important part of coaching. You go to any shoot around, and you have to repeat everything three times. Get it across to the players. The repetition works. There's two for Drame on the weak side. Started with the dribble penetration at the rim by Banks, and Mama did not rotate down on the backside. Miller thought about the three, got stripped, and now Pappas, see if they can get him on track. Don't put the ball in front of your body against St. Peter's, because they will poke it out. Miller gets fouled, and he goes down to the deck. It's Banks that reached in, and if that's him, it's his third. It is the third on Banks. So he's got three. Vaughn has three for Monmouth. Walker Miller in search of his first points of this ball game. The first time pretty much all night where he had any sort of space on the box. He's caught the ball down low with him. He pushed him off his sweet spot, but that time they, they fronted him and Pappas did a nice job of just throwing right over the top, right to the corner of the board. It was the only place that he was open. 
Walker Miller, who King Rice has worked with, as you mentioned, so diligently. 11 o'clock every day, they're there. Miller shooting around, King Rice rebounding for him. 3 7 for St. Peter's. And Shaheen Holloway trying to go to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 11 years. Big screen and a hold by Rupert along with the screen. Nadepo, offensive foul. That's a good call by Matt Potter. I mean, Nadepo thought he had an advantage. On the switch out front, Shabar Reynolds was guarding him, and there really was no room to operate there. He kind of forced the issue, and he paid for it. That was Nadepo, clearly, who created the contact. It's Reynolds down the lane, skidding to a stop to Bain and score. That's a nice move, real hard to defend. Just kind of the pivot, the fadeaway, creating a little space off the bounce. Reynolds focused to get his team back in this. He's got four of the six after a halftime for Monmouth. St. Peter's by five. Lee sizing up Reynolds, and he cashes in for three. It's the first time all night, Shabar Reynolds went underneath the ball screen. Mama did not get out and switch or defend. Miller hit on the arm, and he nearly put it in. Pappas tried to use body English to get that thing to fall. And now you see some more activity from Walker Miller and better position. He's just running down for here. You see a little rub screen at the top, and Walker Miller gets caught fading. He's defending the screener. And the last couple of days, they've either trapped that or switched it or hedged hard. And that time, they just went behind and underneath. And Matthew Lee took advantage. I agree. I agree to your point, Jason, about Walker Miller offensively. The last couple of possessions, he's just run right down the middle of the floor in their transi transition offense. And in the secondary offense, He's created a little space and they're just throwing right over the top. He's presenting himself big and he's getting a good low post position. He's got his first three points of the game. And he missed that one. A little lane violation here. A foul on Robin. Or no, they did call lane violation, I believe. So they'll get one more shot. They announced it was on Drame, and it was a lane violation. That free throw is good. Mama through full court pressure. Ball comes up the sideline. They will look to trap on the run and jump. Shapu has the assignment on Lee right now. He goes under and gets around Rupert. Lee nearly traveled, nearly taken away, and it's thrown away out of bounds by Drabe. So a St. Peter's turnover. Points are at a premium in a hard-fought MAC championship. The Peacocks by six, early second half. And my car is dented. Geico does offer 24-7 claim service. 24-7, that's a lot of attention. They're not actually with you 24-7. They're just available whenever you need them. OK, because I'm an introvert. It's incredibly rare. I don't think that's right. Geico. A practice spicy crispy chicken sandwich eater knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. The venerable Jim Whalen Boardwalk Hall across the street from some great golf. And you look over by the stage, and there is this resounding, deep, resonant sound of the world's largest musical instrument, which played the national anthem before our game today, and just filled up this hall. Finally, too, my bad. Yeah. You were getting ready to sing along with. You forgot your pitch pipe in the rental car. 
No scene. The two teams from Jersey want the title. It's just grit and grind. Yeah, there's no Frankie Valley here today. This is kind of a rush possession out of that timeout, though, by Mount. Punch counterpunch all afternoon here on the boardwalk. St. Peter's by six. The two seed. Here's Dasher into Pappas. Nice defense by Pappas. Ball came loose, and it's taken away by Monmouth for a moment. It's on the deck, rolling toward us, and it's out of bounds. And this will be with St. Peter's. Comedy of errors. Force the issue on the offensive end. And Monmouth, good job of protecting this with the clean pickup. And because there was an official collection of the ball at one point by Monmouth, the shot clock resets. They're going to put it at 20 right now. Defo the screen for Dasher. He didn't get it. Now here is Dasher with under 10 to shoot on the refeed of Lee. Missed it, rebound Pappas, who still hasn't scored the second half. The top five scores in this league. There is Pappas. Missed it for three. Offensive rebound, though, in the corner for Ruddy, a very accomplished rebounder. Tim Pappas last scored in 15.05 in the first. Nice little, nice little screen for him at the top there. He just quickly fired. They've closed him out. Here's Miller. Missed it for three. Rebound St. Peter's and Fusini Drame. Monmouth has made under a quarter of its shots this afternoon. Still within six. Lee threw it away. Shapu up ahead. Half is the shot fake. And this is tipped out of bounds. Nice recovery. Those post players are so good at scramble mode for St. Peter's defensive work. Well, St. Peter's turns it over. They kind of try to force the issue to the death move. It wasn't really open. And then you figure Mama's trying to race it up the court, get an open shot for Pappas in the corner. But St. Peter's on the recovery, so good. Not only sprinting back, but identifying and matching up. It's in Miller. And the wave off the shot. No goal for Miller. It's a foul on St. Peter's on the floor. So nine total fouls here in the second half already. Good job by West uh, Walker Miller. Just posting up in the middle of the lane, getting big. And Pappas does a nice job of finding him. He's really working hard to score now, not low. Foul again on St. Peter's. And that's Lucini Drame, that's his third, it is. Well, Walker Miller is making an extra effort to try to post up and get the ball. He's demanding the ball down low. He did not do this in the first half. He kind of just floated around. He was pushed around outside the box. But this half, he has been bigger and stronger and presenting a bigger target. Here is Miller, middle of the lane. Miller goes up, wanted the contact. Can't believe there was no foul call, putting his hands in the air. I thought there was a foul there. Just because you call a foul two or three times in a row on a player, against a player, you need to keep calling him if he's taking the ball to the rim. Drame, air ball. Reynolds right down the boulevard. And a foul called on his stuff attempt. Man, that look. An icy stare from Reynolds, who's going to the free throw line. He needed to slow the ball down a lot sooner than this. And once he got to the foul line, and they didn't, he was elevating to finish at the rack with power. Tim, that's three on the Defo. So it's three on the Defo, three on Fusini Drame, and three on Banks. Free throw good for Reynolds in the American Conference. Houston a winner over Tulane, 86-66, and a big one for SMU and Memphis, a couple of teams that have hung around the bubble this year. Cincinnati, the eighth seed, has its basketball coach at this game. Wes Miller made it here after the loss yesterday to watch his brother Walker in the finals of the MAC. Thomas has a, a renewed confidence on both ends of the floor. 
from the depot. Header to the corner. Dasher, the shot fake. Into the paint he goes, and he missed it short. Here comes Bobby. Reynolds for Miller. He scores! He got fouled again and didn't call it, but he is rim running with the best. Long, athletic, fast. Can catch it in traffic. And finish in traffic. He's incensed he didn't get the foul call, but the Hawks he are He is flying. He looks like a wide receiver. Look at him. Catch it. Go. Hacked on the arm. Still the ability to finish it. And my car is dented. Geico does offer 24-7 claim service. 24-7? That's a lot of attention. They're not actually with you 24-7. They're just available whenever you need them. Okay, because I'm an introvert. It's incredibly rare. I don't think that's right. Geico. When you decided to order a deluxe crispy chicken sandwich instead of a regular one, what you really decided is that you deserve a little something extra today. ba da ba ba, -ba. Walker Miller has really come alive with six points here in the second half. Couple of trips to the foul line. He thought he should have another one. His brother Wes, much older brother Wes, who they have developed a very close relationship over recent years around basketball. And uh, his brother Wes, after losing in the American tournament just yesterday, got on the team charter this morning, got to the airport, made it to Philadelphia, drove down to Atlantic City, and. Uh, that's some brotherly love right there as Wes takes this game in watching his brother. Should get him some mama swag though for at least the he, day. Hey, look, he came right from the airport. He was he was with the Bearcats. What's a guy gonna do? Edder the scoop, and he scores. Edder is really pesky out there. He's hard to defend because his constant movement. And now we'll see if Mammoth continues to go into Walker Miller, who has been demanding the ball over the last five minutes. Reynolds backs it out. Miller shows the screen. Reynolds nearly slipped. Trying to wrap it around to Miller. He does get it there. Walker Miller, and they'll wave it off. They'll get a foul on the floor against St. Peter's. He's in love down there. He really puts, puts his mind to digging down low and getting that low post position, getting big. He's got those long arms. He's a huge target down low, and that, now they're starting to look for him, and he wants the ball. King Rice told us confidence is such a key for Walker Miller. He was a guy that, you know, he'd make 12 shots and then miss two and sort of hang his head a little bit. But now you see that self-belief building here in the second half, and he's turned into a machine, too. Well, in the first half, he let the game kind of come to him. He just was very passive on the offensive end, kind of felt the game out. This half, he is taking it right to St. Peter's. All of his points after halftime. Monmouth has 15 of its 38 in the foul line. And a foul against Reynolds. This game is going to be one at the free throw. There's no doubt about it. The officials are calling it airtight. Third foul on Reynolds. So. Bunch of guys, handful, five with three fouls in this game. The lead is three for St. Peter's. We love our new apartment. Great kitchen, open floor plan. But there's not much privacy. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our renters and car insurance easy. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Why is it so funny? When you decided to order a deluxe crispy chicken sandwich instead of a regular one, what you really decided is that you deserve a little something extra today. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Last time St. Peter's made the NCAA tournament, they lost to Etwan Moore and Jawan Johnson in Purdue back in 2011. Last time Monmouth made the NCAA tournament, they lost to Alan Ray, Mike Nardi and Randy Foy and the Villanova Wildcats. It's been a long time since both these schools. One of them's going to go, and they are going to have the bruises to show it. A lot of bruises, a lot of fouls called. Uh, not pretty offense, but last half full, real good, rough, stuff, strong, tough, aggressive defense. 
20 on the shot clock as St. Peter's resets with the freshman out of the Bronx, Jalen Murray. Running the weave up ahead, Murray again under 10 to shoot. And we have a foul. That's number six against Monmouth. Miles Ruth with his second personal. Well, Monmouth is switching the ball screens out on the perimeter. That time, the def who got caught in a ball screen switch, and he had Ruth on him, and Ruth just had to wrap him up down low. Vaughn called for his fourth personal foul. Now look, we've watched this tournament the last bunch of days. This is the tightest whistle we've seen by far in any of the games here in Atlantic City. I think they're doing a good job though, Jason, I really do. I mean, both teams are over aggressive, not only on the perimeter, but on low post defense. They're just wrapping up the offensive player. And off the bounce, they're putting forearms into the body and you have to call that. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> when you're watching the game and there's a whistle every 20 seconds, but that's the official's job. So it's the players have to make an adjustment and get their hands, keep them down low. We knew what this game was going to be like. A lot of contact. That one scooped up and no good for Shapu. And the rebound for Fusini Trabe for St. Peter's. Eye to eye, Shapu and Murray. Banks with Pappas all over it. Another long possession. St. Peter's will make it work defensively. Murray missed it front rim off the window. And a foul called against Monmouth. Jarvis Vaughn, and he just fouled out at the 10.47 mark. Vaughn is out of the game after 10 first half points. Jarvis Vaughn is out on an off ball fifth personal. He's just running down the floor and gets tangled up with Ndefu. Not sure that could have been a play on. That's a bad fifth foul. Well, you're just running down the floor. You're trying to get position. Definitely just kind of was off balance a little bit. Vaughn's played well tonight. Defo spinning and scoring. And he finally found a little bit of space down low without Vaughn on him, and he went right to the rim with great footwork. By the way, Tim, that is the first disqualification all year for Jarvis Vaughn. He fouled out at the 10.47 mark of the back final. Miller, cross lane and dropped by Ruddy. Well, that was caused by Casey Medefu. He came over, he kind of half came over to double the ball, and Walker Miller saw the open man on the weak side. He just was a little too hot to handle. Halfway through the second half, winner goes to the NCAA tournament. Nice shot bang. Trame finishes. High low action. Now St. Peter's in a good rhythm offensively. Pappas hasn't scored since the 15-50 mark. And we're going to get a timeout for King Rice and Monmouth. 15-50 in the first half was the last Pappas bucket. Here's a guy who's hit more than 100 threes this season for Monmouth. How does King Rice get him back into this rhythm? Well, I think he's floating on the perimeter a little bit too much. They're denying him out there, and they're doing a really good job, which we thought they would. But you have to counter that with maybe setting some more rub screens for him. But Monmouth right now is trying to go inside on every possession, which is good. They've created some opportunities down low, but now they have to go inside, then back outside. And Pappas, when the ball does go inside, maybe set some back screens for him, some flare screens on the perimeter, or just have him slide into open areas if St. Peter's gets caught ball watching down low. One of these two teams is going to go to the NCAA tournament. Cap is screaming at his teammates there. Bracketology tomorrow. Selection Sunday is here, starting at 6 Eastern all the way through the women's selection special at 8 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN2. And the field of 136, late night, 10 Eastern time, 7 Pacific. Over on ESPN.
ESPN and the ESPN app. There's Pappas. He went down and ended up on the crowd. And St. Peter's by seven. Again, under duress, though. That was kind of a forced shot. He's trying to just force the issue to get anything going, but St. Peter's is stuck to him like glue. certainly do it between two Jersey schools. The Defo into the lane on the kick. He's got Edward. Two short rebound for Ruth. Ruth hustling down the lane on the kick. It's Reynolds missing the three. Offensive rebound Ruddy. And Ruth did take the three. Uh, that's where they have to look for Pappas. Just have him slide into an open area on the perimeter after an offensive rebound. Miller met, he is fouled. Walker Miller will go to the free throw line for two shots and a big second half for that young man. So the difference right now is when the ball goes down low. He definitely had the ball down low, but he, had, he was not thinking about even attempting to score. He was just waiting for someone on Mammoth to bite, and he found Eddard open on the weak side. He didn't convert, but down at this end, Mammoth got the offensive rebound. Instead of looking for Pappas, they just threw the ball right out to the first person they saw. They need to identify where George Pappas is after they get an offensive rebound. Pappas, six points all in the first half. King Rice trying to pump up his guys after the miss by Miller. One for two for Walker Miller. Points have been very hard to come by all night long in Atlantic City. Defo in bracket coverage downstairs. Grave denied by Miller. Great recovery down low. Then the rim run at the other end. You're the traveler. Puts it up and in. Pappas with a fist pump as he finds Miller. Well, Walker Miller, Miller is playing an outstanding half of basketball on both ends. Built the wall down low on defense and then just took off down the middle of the floor to finish. A resounding chance of defense from the folks from Long Branch, New Jersey. Tough pass to Corral by Drame and he kicks it back out. Edward. That faded right. Rebound for Reynolds. Look at Miller run again. Clinton this time. He's denied the ball for the moment. He need to drag up that backside help. He's being crowded down low on the backside with that second post player. Reynolds drops it off down low. And three throws coming. For Miles, Ruth, and Monmouth, it's a four-point game, and Walker Miller has 10 second-half points. Walker Miller didn't do anything in the first half, and now he has taken off and determined to get Monmouth over the top with the rim run. And my car is dented. Geico does offer 24-7 claim service. 24-7, that's a lot of attention. They're not actually with you 24-7. They're just available whenever you need them. OK, because I'm an introvert. It's incredibly rare. I don't think that's right. Geico. Arby's, two for six bucks. Every day, crispy fish with that spicy kick. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Jersey Mike's. A sub above and Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. No frisbee throwing, no ball throwing, so we have to come inside to allow for passes. No barbecues, by the way. You can't barbecue. No loud music, but you can have medium music. No dogs. What can you do on the beach, Tim? Come on. It's like the NFL. <laughs> no fun league. <laughs> no fun beach. Ruth, the free throw. We jest, but Atlantic City has some wonderful beaches. Just can't have a barbecue. 
Two for two for Ruth. Suddenly it's a two-point game again in this MAC championship. Well, Monmouth has had a renewed spark on the offensive end because of Walker Miller, but also down in this end, they've played tough and scrappy. And Casey Defu out of the game with four fouls. He is their rim protector. Bangs tough pass down to the ground, and the battle continues. This is out of bounds off of Monmouth. Like I'm sure a tie-up was coming. We've had a few of those tonight. There's no doubt about it. It's like when that ball hits the deck and it's loose, there are bodies flying. Carnage all night long. Here at Jim Whalen Boardwalk Hall. Banks somehow corralled that and missed it. He never really had the ears on that ball. He did not. He was off balance and contested. Ruth oh. hustling to the rim. He left it way short. Miles Ruth is a jet with the basketball. Not afraid. He's doing one thing when he gets it. He's getting it up on the iron. He's in full goal mode. Banks and Lee have combined for just two made field goals in the second half and a takeaway. Pappas on a run out. Miles Ruth needs to get Mammoth organized. Be patient. Watch for the ball poking, though. Always ever present on defense for St. Peter's. It's a big swing at that shot. Reynolds for Miller on a hop with 10 to shoot. Now Pappas against Banks. The star for Monmouth. Pappas into a shot, and he missed it wide. They're going to get a foul against St. Peter's on the rebounding action on a side swipe as Ruddy went down to the ground. And that's a guy who's already playing with a bad ankle. So Ruddy on the ground, favoring that right ankle. Vaughn already is fouled out. They need Ruddy. Found his way to get back up. He wants to take those free throws. And... Interesting call. Lee is just standing there. And Ruddy tries to back up to go over the top to pursue the rebound. And he goes over the back of Matthew Lee. Lee really didn't, he never moved. Ruddy really is the one that created the contact. Just looked bad. I'm not sure the foul was on Matthew Lee. Bob has taken 22 free throws. This would be 23. So at the end of the clock for Mama, they need to, especially when George Pappas has the ball in his hands at the end of the clock, someone needs to run up and set a little rub screen or ball screen for him just so he can maybe get some sort of clean look with a step back. But that time he just was going one-on-one -on -one and had to force the issue. And you could see the leg was an issue there. The ankle for Ruddy. He's going to come out of the game. I mean, King Rice told us that all week, Ruddy's been in a boot. He's been limping around. And, and every day he wants to get in the game, King Rice says, are you sure you're good to go? And Ruddy says, absolutely put me in. But that fall seems to have taken a little out well, of Well, you know, obviously sportsmanship is, is the 100% thing you're looking for in all parts of this game. But they would have been better served to go out and look at him there just to see if he was okay. They never really came out and looked at him. Then you are allowed to take him out of the game. Not because he's a bad free throw shooter, because he's he was banged up, yeah. literally. And you and you could see it on that last free throw. I mean, he sort of pushed that thing. So now depth is a real issue with Robert and Vaughn disqualified. Ruddy just went and parked himself next to the coaches again. Well, King Rice told us earlier, he's seen him hobble through pregame meal and look like he might not be able to get to the game on his own without crutches. And then 15 minutes before the game, say, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm ready, coach. So, By the way, we have 54, it was 54.9 left, and now we've gone to 54 minutes remaining, which would be the longest MAC title game in human history. And now we're back at 549. Well, with the definitely on the bench, the lack of size really is not that problematic for Mammoth right now. Especially the way Ma Walker Miller has been playing. Ten points in the second half for Miller. Mammoth has never led in the second half of this game as Reynolds comes out to meet Banks and denies the pass. 
What effort defensively, both teams. Miller the closeout, and Lee the three. At the top, end of the shot clock. That's what St. Peter's does. They'll come up, set just a little rub screen for Lee, and Mama didn't react. They went underneath, he made a pay. St. Peter's by four. Pappas and Banks. Pappas has been stifled here in the second half. This is Miller trying to turn into a shot, not available. Instead, found the cutter. And the gets to the ground. Oh, what a delivery by Walker Miller. Marcus McClary, this is a great presence of mind just to keep moving, Mom, with the patience in the half court, trying to get Pappas open on the perimeter. They had him spread out the defense, and then Miller, head up. He had no idea to score. They kind of leave their man. McClary sees his man leave him. Drame just turned his head. Watch Drame turn his head. He gets beat. Just a simple little cut, but you've got the big fella with the nice, soft, perfect delivery. With the shot clock under two, Miller took care of that. McClary with his first point to the ball game, and it's a one-point lead for St. Peter's again. Drum at half court. Mama doesn't need to gamble. St. Peter's needs to just be patient. Maybe try to go down low and then kick it back outside. They double. Banks off the tip. Drame now on a scramble. It's Edert down the lane. He scores! Edert, presence of mind. You think he's just a three-point shooter? Well, he's not. He can take it off the, off the bounce into the trees and finish. That's what happens though, Mama, a little bit of a gamble at half court, ended up, Edder was open, found that open avenue because of the trap at the top. That's 23 points off the bench for St. Peter's, by the way. Miller, no, it faded left, rebound out of bounds, and it goes to Monmouth with 3.56 to go. Doug Edder in double figures, St. Peter's by three. Motion off the bounce, head up, and the ability to finish in the lane with the bigs. When you decided to order a deluxe crispy chicken sandwich instead of a regular one, what you really decided is that you deserve a little something extra today. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. PTI, I need the PDF, COB, AKA EOD. What's the ETA? ASAP, FYI. See my IM? TLDR. What? Too long, didn't read. We don't need any more acronyms, but we could all use more ways to save. PMX, YOLO! St. Peter's by three, trying to get to the NCAA tournament for the school out of Jersey City. For the first time in 11 years, Doug Eddard has 12, the junior out of Nutley, New Jersey. Well, they really count on uh, the officials are at the scorers table because the second from 604 to 603 took a lot longer than the second from 603 to 602. So there was some uh, question about how much time should be remaining. While they're doing that, we'll take a look at tonight's strong move of the game presented by Hercules Tires, and there have been many. A strong game. moves, toughness at its best. That's what you need, and that's what's had happened in this game tonight. Put your head down. You better have a hard hat if you're going to the rim because someone's coming at you, and Doug Edder, Doug Edder has done it tonight. Off the bounce from the perimeter and defensively as well. You said the rare opportunity to get the word from the officials because you were talking. They always go directly to the analyst because we all know what you're talking about, actually. Uh, Tony Chiazza says they're working on a clock issue. So I can officially call myself a detective. We sussed that well, out we before kinda, Tony came we up. We kind of figured that yeah, out. We, did. we had that. Tony could have been a little bit more specific. <laughs> bit. So watch. I mean, the clock stops at 6.06. And then it just stops. And then it rolls and it goes 04 to 03 to 02 very quickly. What would you say? Three seconds there? Three seconds. Let's get the stopwatch out and let's keep playing. These guys have done a good job tonight. They really have. Games like this, not only because of what at stake, what's at stake, but the style of these teams and how they play, these games are very, very difficult to, 
officiate because everyone's poking and grabbing and every rebound seeming there's four or five players trying to snare it and then the ball goes down in the box there's a lot of hands it's only going to get tougher down the stretch too Pappas, and that's an offensive foul. It's a moving screen on Reynolds, and that's the fourth personal on Shavar Reynolds. Well, this is a good, I, the right idea by King Rice. He's just trying to get his best score going at some point and maybe get a three, really change the momentum of this game, but it's a good call. Pappas hasn't scored since 15-50 in the first half. He's the fourth leading scorer in the back at 15 a game. Miller comes over the top and gets the steal. Reynolds, scoop. Miller blocked away and a foul call. Oh, my. Real time, that looked clean. Miller's going to the free throw line, and that'll be, if it's Nadefo, that's five, and it's going to be his fifth. Well, down one, and they tried to force feed the ball to Nadefo, and he was six or seven steps off the low box, and they do a good job of running the floor, and he got him right across the arm. That's a good call. It was. Looking at it again. It's him right across the arm. That is a foul. Yep. Slow time, real time, anytime. And the Defu's got to be smarter. Uh, on a turnover, he was trailing the play, and you have he's an absolutely terrific defensive player, as we've noted and we know, and can block shots from any angle in any spot, but you have to be, you're too valuable of a player to take a chance right there. Tough break for St. Peter's. There was some ball, but there was also arm. That's it. You're right, Tim, that was a good call. Well, it started with the bad play on the offensive end. He was posted up with his back to the basket about 10 feet off the lane, and they're trying to force the ball in low to it. So the depo out. Hussini Drame with four fouls. Both teams short-handed, and that's going to be a foul against McClary. That's his third person. Foul trouble is the major the headline, the A1 story right now. Well, mom has got itself in trouble on that possession. They overextended their defense, and St. Peter's just spread out, and Eddard just had a wide-open alley from that left corner, just a dribble drive into the gap. Best free throw shooter in the league, Cam's the first. St. Peter's by three. Monmouth still hasn't led in the second half. What is left in the tank for both these schools from New Jersey? Yeah, they should probably go in low to Miller again, especially with Nadefu out of the game. A drame on him. Reynolds down the lane. Miller out high for the tie. Rebound tap. It's McClary clearing in for Monmouth. McClary, kind of an X factor, hasn't done much tonight, but has those long arms, put his nose on the ball, saved the possession. Under 10 to shoot. Shavar Reynolds for two. That's no good. Rebound for Lee and St. Peter's. A tough look for Reynolds. Just kind of contested. Monmouth is better served when they go through Miller now. Where's St. Peter's going to go? It's Banks. Double team. They get the ball out of his hand. Drame froze for a moment. Eddard fills the lane and misses. And a rebound for Roof. Nice cut right to the middle of the lane off the ball by Eddard. Just kind of rushed the shot. Reynolds stalking the outside. He's willing to shoot the three. Now he steps inside. Reynolds leaning. On the kick, Miller. For Pappas, the screen from Miller. Miller got hit, he's going to the free throw line. If that's Cassini Drame, that's his fifth person. It is, he's done. Well, this is when Drummond has been successful in the second half. And they've been, they've been patient, not one-on-one -on -one basketball, but move the ball from side to side, some dribble handoffs, and let Walker Miller Establish some low post position because right now St. Peter's has no answer for him down low. 
George Pappas just looked into the eyes of Walker Miller and said four words. He said, let's go right now. Solid, says King Wright. Well, St. Peter's is dreadfully small right now. So offensively, Mammoth will continue to go through Walker Miller. Now on the other end of the floor, though, St. Peter's can be can do some damage. They need to spa space the floor, try to extend, and then dribble drive into the gap. So they don't have any real post threats down low, but they still have good quickness on the perimeter and guys that can make threes. So definitely would love to be in there as Miller misses. One for two for Walker Miller and a two-point lead for St. Peter's. Drame, by far the tallest guy out there now for St. Peter's. Here he is to the rim. He's denied. Rebound for Miller with 120 to go. Um, just rushed the shot, but Miller was in the neighborhood, presented a problem. Reynolds stepped out of bounds, and it's a turnover. He thought he was pushed. He just stepped over the end line, got caught in no man's land. Well, not a good deci decision by Shabar. Reynolds just kind of rushed it there. There was nothing available. That situation, you have to be patient and run your offense. You've been successful, you've got a big man that they have no answer for. Instead, he went one on one, turned it over. Moving down to a minute to go. Matthew Lee, the junior from Puerto Rico, along with Edder and Banks in a small lineup for St. Peter's. And Shaheen Holloway calls a timeout with 13 on the shot clock. It's a two point game for the Peacocks. This has been a one possession game for the last four minutes, Tim. Well, St. Peter's deep foul trouble, as we know. Their star player on the bench, but they're still hanging in there with their gritty defense, and they just have to find a way to score now. They, they don't know who they're going through. I think they're just going to space the court, maybe set some high ball screens, some dribble handoffs. They can go to Banks, they can go to Lee, and then all of a sudden, if you overplay on those, Edder is kind of the X factor. He moves without the ball. He's sneaky good, just to kind of quickly slide into an open area or on the perimeter, just. His man loses him for a half a second. He slides to the three-point line and can bang one in. Good news for St. Peter's is the guys on the floor right now are 11 for 11 from the foul line so far tonight. A championship week, champ week continues, presented by Principal. Later tonight on ESPN, Texas Tech, Kansas, Virginia Tech, and Duke. That's your doubleheader. Texas Tech, Kansas just about to tip over on ESPN. 13 to shoot for St. Peter's. High ball screen at the top for Lee. That's Rupert setting it. Here's Banks with four. Edder got a look for three. Oh, he got it! St. Peter's by five. Reynolds out of bounds, and it will be St. Peter's basketball. Well, Shaheen Holloway threw up a play for Matthew Lee at the top. A little ball screen. A little ball screen at the top, and Mammoth blitzed the ball screen. They handled it well. They reversed the ball, and Eddard was wide open. That's why players are like Doug Eddard, are valuable to have on your team. They're so smart. They understand spacing. They understand positioning on the offensive end of the floor. They don't just stand still and wait for the play to come to them. If they see an opening or if their man leaves them and they see a crack in the defense, they slide into that open vacuum area, make themselves available, and then, of course, he has the ability to make open shots big time. Got a game high 17, Doug Eddard, who lost in the state tournament of champions as a high school senior out of Nutley, New Jersey, and Bergen Catholic. He has St. Peter's on the cusp of a first trip to the NCAA tournament since 2011. And that's one trip since 1995 when they lost to Marcus Camby and Lou Rowe in UMass 27 years ago. St. Peter's with one timeout remaining. They get it in. It's Eddard, an outstanding free throw shooter, who will have two shots 
in his home state. He drops the ball, and he's ready to go with 38.4. Well, there's a lot of time left, and obviously you want to extend the game. But George Papp has fouled one of the best free throw shooters around. I think I would have given the press in a, one trap, get the ball out of his hands, and maybe foul the next player, offensive player out there on the floor. This is the last guy you want to foul right away. Tuning in for the SWAC title game, Texas Southern at Alcorn State. That's currently on the app right now. That will follow our final 38.4. So you're only down five with 39 seconds to go. You have time to set up a press and just see how St. Peter's reacts to the press. I mean, they may get scrambled, you may get a trap, and somebody may dribble it off their foot. You never know, but they never gave you a press a chance. Here's Pappas. Long three front iron. Miller juggled the rebound and he gets fouled on the way up. So two free throws for Walker Miller, who has 13 all in the second half. St. Peter's strong Foul on the lead. We got two. Number four, Walker Miller. Almost in the same situation. We can knock these two in. Let's see, let's see if they actually give their press a look. Big free throw coming here in a six-point game. Each coach with a timeout left. Lee directing traffic on the lane line. He's a coach on the floor. He's so smart, heady. He ran that last play to perfection, finding Eddard on the weak side after getting trapped off the ball screen. They get it into Eddard. There goes the trap, and he is fouled. He tried to step through the trap, and he got knee trouble. Rice not happy with their pressure there. They set up the press. They did trap Eddard, but they didn't close it out. That's the cardinal rule, the first rule in a press or a trap is you cannot let the dribbler split the trap. And what ends up happening is Reynolds gets fouled out there with his fifth personal and St. Peter's is closing in with 27.4 to go. The back title game in the SEC, Texas A&M has won already today. Tennessee beat Kentucky. So there's your final, the balls. And the Aggies coming up tomorrow on Eastern on ESPN. Eddard to the free throw line for two more shots. He's seven for seven this evening. Now eight for eight. Oh, good job by St. Peter's finding. Doug Eddard. It's one thing to have the best free throw shooter out there on the floor as a ball handler, but it's the other thing to make sure he gets the ball. Six point game, his first miss from the line. Here is Pappas trying to cut it by three. He missed it short. Rebound for St. Peter's. And that may do it. Up ahead, Drame with the lay in. Monmouth's got to really hustle. Ruth. Eight seconds, got to put it up. Miller, and a foul with .6 to go, and the party is on in the shadow of the Statue of Liberty in Jersey City, New Jersey. St. Peter's up by eight with .6 to go. They're going to the NCAA tournament for the first time. Since 2011. Well, a character win, especially with Casey Nadefu fouling out of this game late with the game on the line. But St. Peter's they weren't to be denied. Just the confidence in the rock solid defense is there. It's built to last with Nadefu or without. And, and offensively, they did a nice job schematically. They spaced the floor, they dribbled Grove into the gap, and Eddard made the big three. St. Peter's, for the first time in 11 years, is going to the NCAA tournament. Their defense did the trick again, and the Peacocks are going dancing. Shaheen Holloway has done a marvelous job. The coach of the year in this league two years ago, 
St. Peter's and the former Seton Hall point guard are going to the big dance. Well, he made all the right plays tonight, too, down the stretch. His team made the right plays. Very, very confident, making the right decisions on the offensive end, and then defensively just helping each other. It looked like they were in deep trouble when Walker Miller was dominating in the paint, but they continued just to pressure on the perimeter, rebound, and then made the big plays when they needed to. Tim Welsh, always a pleasure to share basketball with you, my friend. Absolutely. March is here. It absolutely is, and that will continue. Shaheen Holloway with a major win for his program. He's Tim Welsh. I'm Jason Benetti. Corey Alexander, Angel Gray in the SWAC title game now.